Yeah, Rap Radar mm-hmm. Podcast, Elliot Wilson. It's B-Dot. B-Dot, this feels special, man. Boom, 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 boom. It's a Griselda Christmas up here? It mm-hmm. feels like it. It's a Griselda mm-hmm. New Year? Happy holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Happy holidays, the everybody. Man. Yeah, we had this guy West Side Gun on, on the podcast when that blind tail dropped, and then you know, undeniable. These other cats, man, from the family, yep. they don't they flood the market too, man. That's... We got Benny here, Tanner Butcher Talk coming. Free. You already know. Yeah, you, you said always vibe with the Butch coming, but you here, man? Butch is here. Right, right. That Tanner Talk here Free. Yeah. And then of course Conway, man, just flood the street. Yo. Conway's not even on these streaming platforms yet. I had to cop his music. I just put, let me, let me put Conway is very brick and mortar. He's like old school out the <laughs> trunk with it. No, yeah. I'm not mad. Conway, look at yeah. that, man. Master P taught me that. <laughs> I got that everybody's food. Well, number man, two, I had to get that. Good man. I got that number one, took it you're back. Good man, man. Gotta get that go. I, I like his style. That B-Dot. black tape. <laughs> yeah, but check like this out though, style. Elliot. Benny said early on Twitter, you got food, TT3, and Blind Tail all came out this year from under one roof. Think about it. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about this 2018 for Griselda. Smash the scrape, man. Thank you. Yeah, mm. man. The Big Ellis year. crew. Period. <laughs> Hands down. Like, this is rare to, for the three of you to sit down for an interview. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we we all be working, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's just like everybody be having so much going on. and But, you know, we had to make it special for y'all, man. So we, we all here, man. We all family, you know? Was that the goal for 2018, just to kind of like flood the market with Griselda releases? Yeah, but we always did that. Mm. That was the thing. It's just more attention is on Griselda now than it was before. But honestly... We dropped less music this year mm-hmm. than we ever did, and this still was. It just seemed like it was more. Mm. But it was you know definitely. What I'm it yeah. was definitely a go to with the fourth with the fourth quarter takeover. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? We spoke about that, like we taking over the fourth quarter. Yeah. Talk right. about that Tanner talk, man. It feels like I mean, you always been nice, but I feel like with this project, you took things to another level. Like, what was that process like putting the the Tanner talk free together? I got to take a lot of time with it. You know what I'm saying? I got to I got to sit and watch and learn and, and get. And get the input from my guys right here, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and, and really take my time in drawing it up, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. So, timing is everything with that project. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you said like I, I saw you tweet that uh, you had to show niggas how to rap again with Tanner Talk Three. Was right. that the goal to uh, for this album, just to highlight bars? It, it was though. Mm-hmm. It was it was just the rap, you know what I'm saying. And the late nights in the studio, me and Derringer smoking on a Waffle House diet. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just trying to write the hardest shit I could think of. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I already know what's, what's at stake, so that was the game plan. You said the know? realest shit of life might be the realest shit I write. Mm-hmm. At the Knicks game so close, spilling shit on Spike. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been like over a decade since the last Tanda Talk. It was 2005. So why yeah. did it feel right to put this one out this time around? Mm, I tell everybody asked me that question, and and it was West's uh, decision to name it that. But like Tanda Talk 2. It was real big in the city, and I just feel like he was trying to recreate that energy and put that bug in my ear when he told me, like, yo, we calling this Tanner Talk 3. So when he said that, I already knew what he was trying to do, so that's what I delivered on there. Mm. Yeah, what's your role with that gun, like, for each other? Like, how do you hold each other? Like, can you detail how you guys hold each other down with, like, this is his project, right? But it seems like you just as involved as if it was your project. I mean... You know, that's that's what I love, love doing the most. You know what I'm saying? It's just just putting in my little two cents or three cents in there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I don't know. We just got a formula, man. I can't really explain it. You know, they trust me enough to, you know, uh, understand my vision. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, you know, you can't trust everybody. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, especially with your baby. This, this is their babies. Yeah. So, for, you know, they, they trust me enough to understand, like, yo, you know what I mean? I might see something different that they, they don't, but, I mean, it always work out. It always work out, you know what I'm saying? Like, And if, if I think of something that they don't like, too, they they just be like, no, nah, I'm not feeling that. You know what I mean? It don't got to be, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But it's just, I think we just, we family. We grew up together our whole life, so we just know what each other like. We know what yeah. each other want, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I know what he wants sometimes before he do, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So it's just... It's just natural. You know no, what wait, I'm how do you think you guys have evolved as artists? Like, like what's what's gotten better? In your um, I think the work ethic. You know what I'm saying? Just and just being more clear with the goal that we set out to for for the the company as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, we just wanted to take this shit over and smash and scrape because where we coming from, the kind of the deck kind of stacked against us. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's Buffalo for people <clears throat> that don't know. Yeah, like yeah. Niggas from Buffalo don't really never get a shot. So, like now that we was able 
and blessed enough to get our shot. Like we wanna, you know, we wanna yeah. show and prove. Like this shit ain't no game over here. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So you saying about some bunch of Buffalo cats could be the kings of New York? What you saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Right. Nah, because nah, for real, like. You know, we put in a lot of work, mm -hmm. yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, you know, like I said, I don't take nothing away from nobody. I respect everybody. I fuck with everybody. We don't have no problems with nobody. We we actually already know everybody damn near, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's mm -hmm. nothing like that. But, you know, we always, you know, get the bottom end of the stick because we're from Buffalo, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's just real, you know what I mean? Whether niggas want to accept it or not. It's the truth. You, you know guys still feel it. You guys still yeah, feel it. Yeah, 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 of course yeah. we do. And we, we the only apples. ones that feel it because we right. we the ones in yeah. that position. We ain't set out mm -hmm. though. Like that wasn't a thing. I was like, yo, we gonna be the kings of New York. Like, like for me, I feel like we the we the we the we the illest in the, in the game right now. Like mm -hmm. that's that's an accomplishment for me. Like when when that's definitive. Like then I feel like I I, I my work was complete. You know what I'm saying? In terms yeah. of respecting the bars, respect, respect the yeah, respect to the bars and all that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like we just we 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 set out. We ain't, it ain't like it's it's no. We just ended to be the illest. Like when you think of like the Nasas, the Cool G raps, and mm -hmm. the the Rock Hems and all that, you don't think like yeah, this yeah. Is the illest niggas in New York, or these are the illest niggas yeah. in the South, mm -hmm. whatever. These are the illest niggas ever. And yeah. we want to be respected in, in that same light, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it's funny because it's like you carry on that tradition of 90s rap, but you still, it's still unique. There's still artistry into it. Like, mm -hmm. I think what's great about what you guys do is that it's got that street element, but then street is, you know, down to your attire and how you guys do with fashion, there's an art to the to the street shit. Yeah. There's a balance to that. Like, there's it's next level in terms of that. Uh -huh. But even with you, Benny, like you said, it's going to take a minute, you know, for Tanner Talk 3 to sink in with the people. Do you feel like the people have gotten into it yet i think they did but like how big that album is mm. you know what i'm saying and and how and, and what it mean to hip-hop just being honest i feel like people won't understand that to two three years later mm. because this these niggas right here sitting next to me is my gift and a curse because when you see this nigga he you know i mean one of the dopest niggas out mm. from down to the fashion entrepreneurship and all that and then this nigga like people don't know i know him my whole life people don't even know like the type of talent that he got that he's about to tap into. Mm. Like people don't even realize that shit. That shit that he do is effortless. So people thinking like, okay, now they got another nigga. He okay. You know what I'm saying? People just Sleeping think I'm just yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Oh, so you just down with the crew. Exactly. Yeah. So for for me to be for me to have like a you know what I'm saying, with the utmost due respect for me to have a fly god or or a reject two in my catalog now, that's mm. that's unbelievable to people. Yeah. You know did you that, know it right away? Did, it. did you know it right away or what changed in the no, process did, of I, making it? Like that you felt like, okay, it's where I want I want it to be. Was there I just certain I, songs you laid down that you felt like, okay, now it's getting to where I want it to be? Yo, I tell people that like how how good how that album turned out to be, I didn't know that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that. They told me though. I did. I know. <laughs> they told me. What did you hear? What did you hear? Was it the Joe Pesci 38s? My shit. That's my shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know why? Because when we in the studio <laughs> making an album and they hearing the songs, you know, they still got stone faces. <laughs> <laughs> These I guys. Mean? Yeah, they still got stone faces, but they let me know, like, no, nah, that's it. That's your best shit you ever mm -hmm. did. And I'm yeah. like, a, a word? Mm -hmm. so, you know Even the way the intro comes on, that the beat is so hard and like the subject matter, talking about how you missed three Christmases and mm -hmm. Real like shit. just being vulnerable with. With you know with what you're talking about, it's just it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And and that's and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to give them that feeling because I wrote that. I wrote that, and I'm really just listening to a whole bunch of they shit. That's fresh off. I'm writing that album fresh off, like after the cow and everything. So I'm really trying to. I'm really trying to. You see how he tell the story about my brother and the cow, mm -hmm. and you see on Langfield, I tell the story from my point of view. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's the yeah. same story. So yeah, I'm just really just tapping into. You know what I'm saying? It's just these guys' story from my point of view, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Let's explain Buffalo that for Machine Gun Black, for people that don't know, can we break down, you know, memories of him and like what make, you know, the people that may not, everybody that's down with the Griselda movement, mm -hmm. the hardcore fans know, but a lot of people that may not still know. Well, Machine Gun Black, he was my big brother, you know what I'm saying, he was a part of this, he was a part of this movement, him and Wes was close, you know what I'm saying, like a lot of the shit that, that I got to do, I was too young to do it, but I was running behind them, so mm -hmm. I got to do it early. You know what I'm saying, and, and he's just uh, he he a major part. That's why we celebrate him the way we do. Yeah, and mention him all the time because he would have been here and joined us right man. with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. You said on one, said on one of the songs that you know when he passed away that like, it changed you, mm -hmm. like and how how so? 
my brother was a was a protector. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And from him dying while I was in prison, and me not able to be to go to the funeral or nothing like that, mm. like it, being back in the streets, it kind of made me edgy, cause I know I don't got, I know I don't got a protector over me, a big mm-hmm. brother protector. So it kind of made me edgy and look at shit a different way. You know what I'm saying? And know that it was all, it was, it was all or nothing with me, cause it, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't no he to get to me. You had to go through him. You know what I'm mm. saying? To see that that mm-hmm. that that. That that was that was gone. I knew what I had to do and what I had yeah. to be. You know what that mean? was just Shane Gun period. He, he was the same way with me. Mm-hmm. Like right. you're not gonna you're not gonna fuck with me. You right. know what yeah. I'm saying? It's just not gonna happen. Like you definitely gonna have to go through Shane Gun to get to me. You know right. what I mean? And nine times out of ten, you're not getting to me because of Shane Gun. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Right. So you maybe know. you also talk about your uh, history with your moms and ups and downs with that. Mm-hmm. Like, it, was it tough to get so personal on the album and really touch on those type of topics? Mm-hmm. Not really, because you know what I'm saying. My mom support everything I do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. And she got like 16 years clean. You know what I'm saying. So yeah. she want me to tell my story. You know what I'm saying. She encouraged me to to rap. You know what I'm saying. She always been a supporter of me. So. And she know my story. She was there. She knows she a part of it. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. But even when you're talking about hustling, like on Joe Pesci 38, you talk about like how you were, you didn't have money in the dope game or you met a plug and you were broke. Mm-hmm. It's like a lot of people wouldn't admit to those kind of uh, moments, but like right. you reveal them in the music. Like, why are you so comfortable being that honest? Because it's, it's, it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? These dudes get on their songs and they tell you about all these drug stories and 32 bricks stacked up and they don't tell you about prison. <laughs> You know what yeah. I'm saying? I, I seen somebody leave a I seen somebody leave a comment, and 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 they was on my shit, and they was talking down on me, saying it's like, yo, Benny, he's like a he like a block hustler. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I'm here to tell you today, it's like the average nigga in the hood getting money is a nigga who's worth twenty to thirty bands. It's not the nigga who worth a half a million dollars. Mm. The average nigga holding down the neighborhood is a nigga worth twenty to thirty bands, taking care of everybody and everything. Mm. It's mm. not a nigga with a million dollars off of, off the dope game. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, it's niggas out there like that, but the average nigga who 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 moving around in his neighborhood is a is playing with them five figures and he holding mm. it down. He riding for and he got jewels. Yeah. He own houses and, no and he holding security it down. With that. He's still no real moving. shit. So that's yeah. how I tell my story. But then when you're talking about money, you had that line where you said the rap, the richer these rappers get, the, the bars get trasher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, do you still do you feel like the money fucks up? Uh, you know, uh, rappers. I mean, sometimes money make niggas soft, man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Too sometimes money, yeah, they get too comfortable, and and and. It's it's a flaw in that, you know what I'm saying? Cause that's you know what the people want. The people want that raw shit, so you got to yeah. give them that raw shit. Well, I know our audience want that raw yeah. shit, right. so we are gonna keep it like that. Yeah, you hit it on, on by, head on by saying something like '97 Hove. Talk about that statement. Like why why did you name that joint '97 Hove? Uh, my favorite rapper is '97 Hove. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? In my <laughs> lifetime, Jay Z. And it's like I heard that beat, and I was just I was just in that feeling and in that mood and. I said that one line about 97 Hove and I just dragged it out, you know what I'm mm. saying? And paying homage to the big homie, yeah. one of my favorite rappers, and you know what I'm saying? 97 Jay-Z definitely inspired me. But why the Pimp C clip though? Cause he was talking some real <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was like three or four clips I could have used. Thomas, that Thomas. You know what I'm right. saying? So long I picked that, pimp, you know what I'm saying? Man. Real right. shit, long little Pimp, to pay homage to him, you know what I'm saying? And Gun, you saw Hove bigged up uh, Brutus on his oh, yeah. picks of the year. Yeah, Which man. features all three of you guys on that joint. Like, Yeah, yeah, that was... That was dope, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? That was real dope, man, you know what I mean? I'm chilling, the whole vein hit me. <laughs> it's like, yo, you want whole bliss? At first, I'm like, it ain't even hit me. I'm just like, all right. <laughs> then somebody else hit me, like, yo, you want a list? Then a few people tagging me and shit, and I'm looking like, oh, shit, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I'm on the list. Yeah, I'm on the <laughs> list, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, it, you know, it was just dope because not only that, I, you know, I'm on a list with my family, so yeah, one right. It's not even just me, so it's it's all three of us, you know what I'm saying? And you know, Pete Rock blessed us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So shout out to Pete, you know, you know what I mean? That shit is that that song is 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 nuts, man. It's one of my favorite yeah. joints. I would have added Count Elizabeth personally. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> now, but Conway actually, Black- I, actually, I should have been on there about six times. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I take the one though. All yeah, right. but Conway, the one he picked, Brutus, you blacked out in that last verse, mm-hmm. man. Talk about well, that. I'm, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> <laughs> He, my man shot a nigga daughter by mistake. He took a quarter. Asked him why he copped out. He said that's better than life. Mm. Yeah, that's a true story, man. Damn. Free the homie too. You know what I mean? Oh, it's based on the real situation. Yeah, that's everything about my music is transparent. I'm, I'm very transparent with my mm. music, so mm. it's like when I say some shit, it, it either it either happens or you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it's, it's 
it's official. You know what I mean? That's yeah. that's one of the homies from the hood. He's been down for about 15 already. I was a kid, like, kind of when he went away. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that was, um, you know. <laughs> Talk yeah. about the transparency, situation. though. Benny, man, on the time, of th on the time of, I'm like, yo, on the draft, 03 joint, mm -hmm. you're talking about how, like, you, your man shot somebody, and then they went to the courthouse, and you blew a kiss at the guy's mom. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> <laughs> or even like how you said a friend of yours took uh, the charge for his brother. Right, right, right. And right. like, is there like any appeal to that? Like, he, he was like, okay, okay with that? You, you know, you you would be surprised how often that happened. Yeah. Mm. You would be surprised how often that happened. You know what I'm saying that's that's regular shit in the hood. Right. You know what I'm saying somebody doing time because what are you gonna say? You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like real shit that you would be surprised how often that happened. Right. Uh -huh. But even with your whole situation, you talk about like how you did time in prison, stuff like that. On that same particular record, draft 03, you and LeBron got drafted at the same time. You went to the NBA and right. you went to prison. Right, right, right. How did that affect you and uh what you had going on at the time? Man, it, it made it kind of made me feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, look at him, because I was I was watching him go through the draft and all that. Like on a in, in a federal facility on the TV, and just knowing that you know he was a, he was a young prodigy, and just mm. to know that he was 18 going through all of that, and I was 18 going through what I was going. So mm. to be honest with you, in some weird fucking way, I kind of identified with it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like he was he was going through a big situation, and I was too. I was the youngest nigga in the whole jail. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah, Gun, you dropped the um, you know, the blind tail joint. We had you up here for the first time, man. We we definitely love that project. Mm -hmm. But out of nowhere, you hit him with that Hitler Six, man. Like you couldn't rest under your laurels, man. What happened? <laughs> Why splash him real quick, man? Cause we taking over shit, man. <laughs> we not. I'm about to drop something else next, man. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Yo, a lot of Puerto Rico talking that on the album. Did you have a great trip to Puerto Rico or something? Like, what's going man, on in Puerto listen, Rico? Man, shout out to fucking Puerto Rico, man. For real, man. Like that shit was just it was it was just dope. You know what I'm saying? You know, I just love the atmosphere out there. It's a whole other kind of culture. You know, I can't leave. I can't go overseas. So that's Puerto Rico is my overseas. You know oh, what I'm saying? Oh, your situation. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it's just like you know, going over there, just the food, the atmosphere, the music. You know, after the hurricane, it's kind of Got that griminess to it now. Mm. Man. It's just like a lot of street, like old New York kind of vibe. Yeah, it just tore it down, and it's just it's like it's like a a, a big West Side of Buffalo. Mm. Mm. That's it. So you just touched down there for a little bit, just after after the, after rolling out that project, and yeah, just, no, I just yeah. I went out there. We you know we did the project in Puerto Rico. Mm. Oh wow! Yeah, 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 that, yeah, right yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that, that vibe. Yeah, it was done yeah. in Puerto Rico. So you know, we out there smoking Puerto Rican bud. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Going to the strip club, looking at the Puerto Rican ladies, you know what I'm saying? Just just having a good time, eating the food. Like I said, I even found a restaurant at the home. I went in there to order some wings. He was from Buffalo. Oh wow. I'm like, oh shit. So, you know, it was just it was just dope, a good experience. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And um yeah. I feel like, you know, just making certain projects now. I want to go to different places. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, like like, Yeah, because you know it don't take me longer than a week to make a project anyway. Mm. So I might as well just book a week somewhere and just do a project and just mm. catch that culture. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm think like I've been going to Houston lately. I think my next project gonna be in Houston. Mm. You know one song you put that little screwed and chopped effect on your on your vocal on one of the. Yeah, I've been right. doing that since my first project. Since yeah. Hitler one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I had Sway Matimbo's on Hitler 1. So I always put, you know what I'm saying, the chop and screw. I did that on part one, part two. A lot, of, lot of, of them, yeah. yeah. Talk yeah, about that series. Like, what does that mean, Hitler wears her man's? Like, a little controversial whenever you say Hitler in the title. Like, why is that such an important uh, brand I mean, within the West Side Gun brand? I mean, you know, it's, it's important because that's what started it all. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, it's just... You know, it's spin off the Grammys, flyest shit, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, like I always said, it was going to be called The Devil Wears Prada at first. Because, you know, that's my first title I, I made, period. Yeah. So my first title was going to be Devil Wears Prada. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm too fly to be copying off somebody's shit just like that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Even when I did, like, Supreme Blind Tale, it was really to pay respects to the clientele. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it was just like, but just straight out, just... Using Supreme clientele, I yeah. can't do that. You know what yeah. I mean? And it was just like, you know, I didn't want to wear Devil's Wear Proud. I kind of wanted to, you know, have the same impact, but just, you know, be original with it. You know what I'm saying? And I just think, um, 
that just opened up doors, you know what I'm saying? After like one, two, and three, and it was just like, you know, then bro just started attacking, and we started attacking together, and you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, it, yeah. just, it just went from there, you know? Right. That's the origin. But Benny, like, how have you been adjusting to, I guess, notoriety? Because like on Scarface versus Sosa 2, talk about like how you thought about leaving the game because there's no love in it, and you reconsidered because, you know, was it trying to get into the fame? Like, how have you adjusted? It's, you, know. you know what I'm saying? It's different, you know what I'm saying? You see people staring at you, but you know what I'm saying? They staring at you, staring at you for a different reason why they used to stare at you. Mm. They're like, oh shit, is that him? So it's different, but I'm enjoying it, you know what I'm saying? That's mm. what I'm here for, you know what I'm saying? I'm basking in it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just working. Your big mom said you acting different since the deal. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> she said that. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's a fact. Word. <laughs> but then you also said talked about your skill set, like, you know, you could be the next Nazir if they judge you off skills. Yeah, like, yeah. who is that someone you looked up to? Like, how did you get so nice? Man, I'm telling you, I've, I've been a student of this game for so long. I, these niggas been around me. Before mm, I was yeah. ready for this, they was doing this. So I came up in it. And and I never realized how much of an advantage that I had. Mm. Like, really until now, you know what I'm saying? That's where it all how comes nice from. How nice my brothers are. Man. Right, it's, mm. it's about being overprepared, you know what I'm saying? And, and, that's what, and that's what all that was, all them... All in the '90s and the 2000s, I was just around these niggas doing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm just over prepared for this shit. You know what I'm saying? We really vets, and it's like a lot of people just now hearing of us. Mm-hmm. But it's it's like they compare us to other niggas, but it's not fair to those other niggas because those other niggas really just started this. Mm-hmm. We've been doing this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You got some favorite lines, Otana talk? Uh, my bitch asking me to settle down. I was reckless at selling brown. She know I'm finally on level ground. Mm. I'm trying to change, but in my head it sounds telling me I could be El Chapo instead of Kevin Lyles. Mm. Mm. <laughs> my joint is on uh, rubber bands and weight. He said the red lays on the nickel turn a hater into a Hindu. Mm. That's at that point I had a call or hit a uh, gun like yo, this guy is this guy's a problem. <laughs> yeah, I knew that was when I wrote that line. I'm like people gonna like this shit. Right? <laughs> So Conway, what's up with this everybody's food series, man? And why can't we get this on the streaming platforms, man? What we gotta do, man? Let's let's negotiate. How we gonna get this right, gun? I don't know, man. You know, talk to slime, man. I'm sorry, I'm sorry y'all sing a song out. Yo, I'm tired of spending my money on this Conway. It deserves my money, but still, mm-hmm. man. That's no, what you I'll want, you'll you. get it. I'll show you. Nah, That's but talk you. about the everybody's food series, because you just dropped number two, Eat What You Kill. Yeah. Talk about that project you just laced on it. I was just bored. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so I just felt like recording oh some shit. Nah, real shit. I just felt like antagonizing these fuck niggas a little more. <laughs> the you machine. know what I'm saying? And, it's, 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 you know, everybody. Like, it ain't no, this ain't no, one thing niggas be forgetting about this rap shit, this ain't no friendly competition yeah. shit. Mm-hmm. We ain't, it ain't no friends. Like, I want niggas to come at me. I I I, I openly invite that. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, you don't, Conway, because you nah, said if a rapper mention your name, you're going to bust their brain. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, that's I what, it's that's all... up for the rapper to decide if that's what he want to <laughs> Do and jump out his tree and do, but you always right. speak about it too, like, but the whole you know, so much hip hop gets real feature culture. Like, do a record with me, I want to do a record with you. Like, mm-hmm. you don't really rock with that too tough, right? Yeah, that's kind of from when I did, like, before all this shit took place, before we was able to be blessed enough to be on rap radars and all that shit. <laughs> I used to reach, I used to reach out to niggas, I used, to, I used to reach out to niggas, like, yo, I, I got some shit I think yo, you man, I'm a new Grizz fan, man. And niggas, <laughs> niggas, niggas, niggas would dub my shit, you oh, know what I'm saying? Man. Niggas and niggas would be, would try to tax me crazy and try to mm. dub my shit, so it's like, I'm a nigga with a chip on my shoulder and this shit. You know you what I mean? Like, you got the receipts. Yeah, like yeah. I'm not reaching. I, I just feel weird about reaching out to niggas and DMing niggas and like, yo, get on my shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm good. I we, thought we about good. when you said, mentioned that, I think about that flex freestyle. You talked about how like your uncle said, stay humble, but you said you couldn't. Yeah. Is that kind of like reflecting off of what you just said? Kind of. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because I'm still humble. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We still humble. I, I, I remind my guys all the time, like, we on defense. Yeah. We ain't out here trying to initiate us or, or we ain't we we ain't pointing no names out or, or this is on the niggas and none of that. We ain't on that. We're here to make history. Like I said earlier, like, where we come from, yeah. we don't get no shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now that we got the shot, we got to we gotta make sure we hold it down because there's a lot of people that's counting on us to yeah. – to, you know what I'm saying? To to oh, do yeah. what we need to do and, and make the history for our city. 
You know Might what I'm saying? Might be able to maintain being so driven. Like, obviously, people know you've been shot and things like that. Like, But you've always stayed determined. You kind of take that challenge and took it to another level in terms of Cause people always, approach. like I said, people always counted us out, and, and where we from, man, we we don't get, we get slighted a lot. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We don't get the, we don't get the opportunities and the shots that, you know, somebody like from the boroughs may get, or yeah. from Atlanta, or from L.A. or Houston or whatever, like Chicago, the bigger cities, kind of. Yeah. Like we don't get them same opportunities and slots. Like when I was a young nigga going to open mic nights to rock and all that shit, it mm-hmm. wouldn't be no, you wouldn't see no 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 A and R's or no niggas there that could. You know what I'm saying? You was there for your health. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like there was nobody like, there checking for you. I feel a bigger sport. responsibility, like that I owe to my city for motherfuckers that's coming up after us. Like when once our once our moment is over, mm-hmm. it's gonna be it's still more niggas with, with bars in Buffalo. Yeah. There's still more niggas that's kicking that shit and talking that shit and trying to hold this shit down. But it's meaningless if we don't you know, change the dynamic of how our city is perceived and, and, and you know, we got to make sure that we get our shot and we, we hold this shit down. So, so one is like being an underdog but then being that. a leader too. Like, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You got to show niggas yeah. how to do this shit because nobody never did it before us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we got to, you know, that's a that's another burden on us that we got to carry. Like, we got to lead the way to show younger niggas that's coming up trying to, you know what I'm saying, yeah. kick their yeah. rhymes and all that, how to, how to, how to handle to do the business side of shit, how to all that shit, like yeah. how to make an ill project and all that. You know what yeah. I mean? So like, all of y'all, like it must be crazy that like you know you obviously detail, y'all been through some real street shit, but like hip hop has become your calling. Like you know that's a lot of people's dreams, but you guys made it a reality. Does it, does it bug you out even when you look back on it? Like yes, yeah, we really made this like mm-hmm. a reality every day. Yeah, yeah. nah, it's, it's, it's tough. To, it, I mean, it's it's still like. It's still surreal to me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why I, I try to enjoy this shit while I still can, you know what I'm saying? I live, I, I tell boy, I live my life like an 18-wheeler with no brake pads going downhill, <laughs> baby. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never had nothing. I come from the bottom. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy my moment, you feel me, E? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Betty, you say he was going to clear uh, half a million before New Year's. How's that looking? Oh, he, he way ahead of schedule. <laughs> <laughs> See how he looking? <laughs> Man, let me hold some you know what I mean? That motherfucker Benny way ahead of schedule. Oh, shit, independent money, so we touch yeah. it first. I was about to tell him to PayPal me something. Yeah, yeah. 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 Short <laughs> for the night. Yeah. Venmo, Venmo, man. Yeah, any oh, of them shit, I got them all. <laughs> but how do you guys bounce that? Because because like last year we heard like you guys signed the Eminem. Like how does it bounce? Like you, you signed the Shady, but then you also moving very heavy as an independent force. Like. How do you guys balance that, and what what does the future hold in terms of that situation? I mean, you know, I just talked to Paul the other day, man. You know, I'm gonna go see him tomorrow, man. Well, you, you talking know, about Paul Rosenberg, Esquire? About that guy, yeah, the Paul D. Rosenberg, big, Esquire, big guy, man, the big guy, man, the big bald guy. Is is this still a new face of Shady right here? Of course, Conway, baby. Of course, you know what yeah. I mean. And his album already done. Yeah, I took, over, I took over the building. Yeah. <laughs> his 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 album already done. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. And I'm telling you. So was that the move? Like, how did that? Like, did we talk about that last time? Like, how did that deal come together? And like, what? How do? How is that Griselda going to be showcased through Shady, but then still maintain? You know, the Griselda edge that you guys built. You know, we was always independent. You know what I'm saying? I had went over there was 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 dealing with them uh, at first, looking for management. I always really wanted to stay independent. You know what I'm saying? It was just like you guys were doing good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. and I went over there for management, and then once they just started hearing the music and talking to me more, that's when Paul talked to Marshall, and they was just like, nah, let's like give him a label situation. And um, you know, the first artist was me and Conway, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You know, his album is done, you know what I mean? I'm gonna start working on mine in 19. But you know, for the most part, even up to now, you know, I still move like an indie, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just because right now it's like, we had to take over the streets, mm. you know what I'm saying? We gotta take over the streets, you know what I'm saying? And that was my whole thing, like, what's the point of coming out with a major if we not that lit yet, you know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. So sense. like, even though we, we're we on the major team, let's still keep fucking the street up for yeah. a while. So when we do come out on a major, it makes all the sense in the world, you know what I'm saying? It's all about timing. We already solidified, you know what I'm saying? We, already, we didn't already made history and you know, that's already done, but it's like 19 is it's, it's going to be more of like 
few indie projects, but now you're finally going to get the major releases mm-hmm. as well. And that starts with Conway. Exactly. What should, what should we expect, Conway? Can you tell us anything, brother? Um, <laughs> no, I, I consider it the illest shit in that probably the stupid, last two man. decades. That shit's stupid. You know what I'm saying? So. He got some people on there too. You wouldn't even. Oh, so uh, big that's, boys that's on it. Yeah, that's, why I said, <laughs> that's why I said niggas don't even know like what this nigga we capable really, yeah, of. We really you know got the next two, three years. We got a classic in the tuck. We got a classic in the tuck. We got the next two, three years. It's done. It's done. I'm on the album, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm on that shit, right? on that, uh, He got 16 on, on that? Rapping. He got 16 yeah, on that? That motherfucker got about 24 on that. Oh, you want to do man. some interview skits on that album? You know what I'm saying? Conversations? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I definitely do. Yeah, like, nah. You slept on me, Elliot. Yeah. <laughs> nah, but yeah, nah. I got something incredible in the, in the tuck, mm. man. And, 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 you know, I've been working on it. It's been done for a while, kind of. You know mm. what I mean? i just been, you know, just sitting on it and trying to let it go through the what it need to go through to get get out properly, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And just being patient, you know, I ain't in no rush, you know what I'm saying? I, I know what I got, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm 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 in the driver's seat kind of because mm. I know the product I got right now, you know what I mean? Mm. And it's probably, I think it's some of the illest shit I ever recorded, you know what yeah. I'm saying? What do you think mm. makes it different with somebody that's a hardcore Conway fan that has all your projects? Mm. Because the beginning, my, all my other projects like Reject Two, Goat, um, Reject on Steroids, I mean, these are more like mixtape indie classics, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying, and, and my whole, um, my direction and, and with with those projects was just to, I wanted to solidify myself as like a a, a, a ill nigga, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, that was, shit. like I wanted to bar work the streets to be, up. yeah. Crazy, like you all the way through, ain't no yeah. hooks, it's nothing mm-hmm. but hard ass beats. And the illest shit niggas could ever write down. And I ain't writing none of half of that shit anyway. But I just, that was how I wanted to attack it. Like, that's why I named that shit like GOAT. Grimy, it's an all time. Yeah. Like, there's no hooks and songs and dance moves and none of that shit that come with this. <laughs> it's straight hard beats and, and, and drums, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Right. But with this project in particular, like, it's radio I think this joints. the most this the most transparent that I've joints, been in a, lot, in a lot yeah, of it's my that music. Shit. Mm, you know right. what I'm saying? So, yeah. It's a different kind of way you are, nobody never heard. That's what set it apart from all my other shit I ever did. You know what I mean? Because I approached this like a real album. Like this yeah. is my debut real album. This ain't no just no no throwaway tape shit just to feed the streets and keep niggas. You know what yeah. I mean? Keep niggas thirsty. Like I really took my time and, and, and used my head to come up with some of the some of the the most. I want to say like the, the the hardest moments in my life, the hardest times in my life, and reflect on that. Yeah. But also still be lyrically witty at the same time. Yeah. But I wanted to talk about some things that there's some records and some verses on that project that is talking about things that I haven't talked about with with, with nobody. Yeah. It's personal right. shit that you know that I've been just going through it's myself on a, on a yeah. personal tip. And that's what I think is the beauty of my whole my whole album is like the transparency, mm. you know what I'm saying? But it's also like you want know to say like then you got like a record that okay this radio may get this mm-hmm. joint like they may catch that like how did you stretch yourself to be make? Well, that I didn't go into it with that way of thinking like yeah I need some shit for the radio I need some shit for yeah. the club mm-hmm. it's just you know what I mean them beats kind of like took you there. just took me there you yeah. know what I'm saying so it's like and it's it's really. Like my album is kind of like a story. Like so, those radio and club type of shit mm-hmm. is really like, it's just highlighting the moments of the time of my life when, you know, I was standing on couches and popping bottles and living, a, you know, yeah. a, a great life. Yeah. And leaving a club is when what happened to me happened to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I kind of wanted to. Yeah. That's just you know highlighting that moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when you hear like. Some shit that you might hear in the club or the radio and shit. It's like that's what niggas was on at that point in time. Like my yeah, album is, yeah. is a story. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's a it's a movie. It's a book. Right. It's it's my open book. It's like well, I, I, I I just took my whole. Yeah. You know what I mean? What I'm trying to say? I just opened up yeah. and just what you think you about it, man. You heard it. And Tell me, man. Yeah, and, <laughs> and when I heard it, sure, when I heard it, like because I'm a rapper too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I know it's certain things that before I have a conversation about these. Issues, I could put it in a song verse. Yeah, yeah, for and real. As soon as, this, as soon as I heard the song, I know what he was doing. I'm saying, and I'm like, damn, 
That's what I'm saying. It's like people don't even know. Long shit be too real. Yeah, man. shit be That's too real thing. for niggas. Like, exactly. Like people from the outside listening to it just think this shit is lyrics, mm-hmm. and it just sound good and yeah. it's just fucking rhymes. Well, you check me that. What people Bruce, don't I'm understand like, no. is this <laughs> shit is like, real no life. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This shit is real life. So when we listening to it. It's like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, could we hearing what other people talking about? So the sharing yeah. it, like, we, we, so many people talk about mental health and all these type of issues. Now, the sharing, you think, help you guys? Like having to share, like the ups and downs and the pain thing. It helped mm-hmm. me yeah. because usually I keep shit bottled up and I just, like, I, you know, go somewhere and just be alone and deal with my shit. How I gotta deal with it, but yeah. I think it's helpful because you know, mm-hmm. what I mean, you gotta, you gotta. You know, you gotta get that shit off your chest, mm-hmm. man, because that shit start becoming too heavy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean to deal with. You know what I mean. And that was the thing in this album, like, like a lot of people didn't know, like a lot of these things, like yeah. me, 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 me struggling with that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Depression and all that shit. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I lost a child this year. Mm-hmm. I lost. You know what I mean, my cousin com- hung herself with some crazy shit, committed suit. Like, I've been through a lot of shit just this yeah. year alone. Like, yeah. I just don't speak about it or go on social media. I ain't right. looking for no no yeah. sympathy or none of that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, put it up on the But it's on the album. But it's like, yeah. you know, these is, these is, it might look good on internet. You might see niggas with nice outfits on and, and jewels and performing at Coachella, but. Behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like real shit. Yeah. Real life shit that I don't happening. even be knowing how I'm a, how I, how I do it every day. I be shocked myself. Like, yo, how do I do it, man? Mm-hmm. How do I how do I do this shit? Like being shot in the head and half my face paralyzed and I hear the jokes and the heckling and all that shit. It's like I'm really like a a a a, a callous individual because I don't care what nobody think about me or what nobody gotta say about me. That's yeah. clear. I'm still rapping and shooting yeah. videos mm-hmm. with Bell's palsy, half my face paralyzed. Like, I don't give a fuck what niggas got to yeah. say about me. I'm richer than these niggas anyway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. And ain't and nobody gonna lay a hand on me. You was, so, you was like, yo, where the fuck your comments? Before, yeah, man? I don't care about. I don't. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't let that bother me because yeah. I'm here to inspire. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's probably some people that's going through some shit. That's probably. You know, and it won't leave their bathroom or won't leave their bedroom because they yeah, worry about yeah. how they look with mm-hmm. Bell's palsy or they, you know what I'm saying, or, you know, whatever they're going through. Yep. That's this it's, it's, it's difficult to deal with. So coming from where we coming from, the city we from and the obstacles we had to face, losing Machine Gun, who was the, the pillar of our of our, our entity, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Losing a child, system, losing yeah. and all the other losses that we all done went through in the in the the bullshit we done all been through and for us to still be here smiling and putting out project after project, year after year, classic after classic, mm-hmm. it's like, I be kind of getting frustrated when people would, like gloss over that and ignore that. Like, yeah, it'll be easier it. for me if I was from Brooklyn or Harlem, mm-hmm. rapping like I'm rapping. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, but like, like, for me being from Buffalo, it's right. like, you immediately associate that with ridicule, but I ain't, like whatever the bills went through, and mm-hmm. they, you know, what I'm saying, ten year or whatever. Jim like, shout out Jim Kelly. I be hearing niggas all the time, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm from, yeah, I'm from Buffalo. Like, oh, well, yeah, I mean, it's in the state. You know what I mean? Like, it's cold. You see yeah. what I'm saying? So the waiting front on New York State compared to New York. I don't State. like that. Yeah. I'm gonna be yeah. honest that with divide. you. I don't like that. Yeah. So that's why when I go in the studio and I'm doing like those those uh, about what you have about five ten tapes up there mm-hmm. you bought. Yeah. That's why I rap like that and I go like how I go. And we go like how we go with this yeah. shit. Cause it's like, we know that the deck was stacked against us and yeah. we had to work like 10 times harder than the average nigga that's from a borough or from LA or Chicago, mm-hmm. somewhere where, you know what I mean? We ain't had no Capitol Records building in Buffalo. You know what yeah, I mean? Yes, no Def Jam building in Buffalo. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And wasn't nobody coming to Buffalo to check for talent yeah. right. or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So. Pioneers is that the reason that. why we had Benny, to go get it? You put out two projects because you know, as good as Tanner Talk Three is, we cannot forget about a friend of ours. Mm-hmm. So, like, was that the uh, goal just to put out two projects, or why did you just let that one live? Peter tapped mm. in. Because mm. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I you tapped in. That's the joint that kind of put me on to <laughs> Benny because people say, like, "Yo, check out Benny." I was like, "Let me get this a spin," and I heard, it. I was like, "Yo, this El Camino guy's good, but Benny's even better." Like, it's like. When I did a friend of ours, I was in Coachella and I just wanted to, I just wanted to like do something while I was out there. But 
Niggas was too busy out there partying and fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I didn't get to do it out there, but I took that idea and I just like continued on what I was already working on and I put a project out. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like 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 bro said, feed the streets. That's one thing Griselda gonna do. We're gonna feed the streets. You know what I'm saying? Consistent. You can count on that. We the see, people's champs. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You see this nigga champ. drop blind tail and, and came right back. That's what I said. Yeah. I was shocked. That when was I put like... up, when I put out my shit, and this Cause this nigga got so much shit, I don't be knowing. And I mm. see the niggas like, yo, my shit coming out. I'm like, damn, yeah, this nigga don't too. fuck around. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So what we gonna do is feed the streets, and that's what it's about. It was about feeding, feeding the streets, and and you could always, even though it's a lot of material, you can always expect the highest quality. Mm -hmm. It's never quantity over quality. I don't yeah, give a fuck yeah. how much we put out. We balance. in that motherfucker, and we working our ass off, and we going hard. You know what I'm saying? So it was just, it, one trust you had about, India that right. really stood out to me. Like, was she okay with? Putting her business out there like that? Kind of wasn't because she was like, you're going to get me fired from my job. <laughs> <laughs> so That you know was man? your wife? That's your wife? No, that's my girl. That's, that's your my girl. girl okay. You know what I'm saying? And, and I asked her, I'm like, yo, what should I call this song? She's like, you should call it India. So I left it India, but I was just, mm. I was going to change it, but I ended up keeping it like that. But hell yeah, she part of my story. You know right. what I'm saying? You know, the statue of limitations over. She know what she did. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? She know what she did to help me get here. You know what I'm saying? Right. You cannot, like I said, ignore El Camino and his contributions. Like, I love what he did on that project. Like, can you talk about what he does, you know, and how he helps the... Man, it's like El Camino is like a little brother to all of us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and he fell and he fell in the little, the little spot. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. a younger nigga. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to think. You know what I'm saying? We all 30 plus. He in his early 20s. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we all see, we all see ourselves in Camino, so we keep him close. You know what I'm saying, and, and and he just got a he just got a different side. He a different era, so the way he be doing with those melodies, he got a little Max B in him. You know what yeah, I'm right. <laughs> and so you know, I put on a beat, and as soon as I see that nigga start writing something, I said, "Go in the booth, nigga, lay that down, and make my job easier." You know what I'm saying? So there was a line. I think it was on uh, I think it was on uh, Tana Talk, or maybe it would have been a friend of ours when you talk about how your nephew, like, mm -hmm. was selling drugs, and you weren't even mad at him about it. You right, just told right, him. Right. Be careful, like right, because if you're gonna do something, do it right. Right, you know what I'm saying. And I can't, I can't be mad at him for something I did. You know what I'm saying. So what I'm gonna do? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna scold him, or I'm gonna show him the way. Mm. You know what I'm saying. It's, it's either one way. Like this, like we say, this is reality. You know what I'm gonna tell him to stay in school. He, he not gonna stay in school. Mm. So it's about if you're gonna do this, you need to do it right. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, yeah, right. And you also talk about your daughter a lot on the records. Like, mm -hmm. how important has she been in this whole process? Like, yo, my my daughter been been in the studio with me her whole life. Mm. You know what I'm saying, and she was born in 2005 when I dropped Tana Talk Two. Mm. You know what I'm saying, my baby mother was pregnant at my release party with my daughter for Tana Talk Two. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying, so you know what I'm saying she she she's into it. She understand what I'm doing and what I got going on. You know what I'm saying, and, and that's how I talk to her. I talk to her through the music because she hear my music. Mm. You know what I'm saying, so. You know what I mean? That's how she reacted when you said you pulled out that big gun and she was scared. <laughs> yeah, she was scared. She walked in the house, she seen that big AR, she said, Dad, put that up. <laughs> I, 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 really, I put her in the other room, I said, this for us. This right. make sure nobody fuck with us. We right. good. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm sure, obviously, she's always on your mind, so you don't go back to the penitentiary. You so, said, like, if you get you another case, you're going to get the mandatory max. Mm -hmm. So is that a reality for you? Yeah, hell yeah, that's a reality. I got three felonies, mm -hmm. all drug related. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's it's a, by the grace of God, and I'm saying I, that I'm still here right now. So, it's with great power comes responsibility. So we that's why we go how hard as we go, cause we take this shit serious. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It ain't about looking cool for the homies or being out on a block or hustling, cause the goal is to get the paper. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And be stand up and take care of your family. You know what I'm saying? The goal ain't to be a dope boy or you know what I'm saying to be in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Trying to uh, impress other niggas. You know what I'm saying? So, you know I mean that's my situation. So. I got a way out of it, and, and I'm working my ass off. Right. When did you become the butcher, though? Like, where does that name come from? Man, it's I, I, I said the butcher. Remember when I said Benny the butcher dog? Really, I'm cooking raw. I said that in <laughs> 2005. <laughs> mm. You feel what I'm saying? And just like he, it was his uh, idea to call this project Ten to Talk Three. With everything that they had going on when they put me in. I was wanted to recre recreate that energy too. Mm. I've been called myself the butcher, and I kind of sway swayed away from it. But I wanted to recreate that energy. Mm. And, and this nigga, he say shit like that. <laughs> when I come to do a, do a feature on his shit mm -hmm. about two or three years ago, he like, yeah, I need the butcher on this one. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he trying to he trying to let me know like what he that, need me yeah. to do. It. He said, yeah. yeah, nigga, I need the butcher on this what's, one. What's, you know the, what I mean? what's the butcher? That's like if we say we want mm -hmm. some cannon. 
Like, right, if right. you say you want some cannon from him, you about to get some of the illest shit you ever heard in your life. Right, really. <laughs> just, <laughs> just the old us. You yeah, know what I'm saying? The young us. I want that butcher. Right. Mm-hmm. And and you, well, you say you don't even write nothing down, not even an iPhone. You don't get your iPhone notes on nothing. We really get on yeah, the mic and it's nothing. Yeah, uh, nah. I used to, I used to, but shit getting to annoy. We getting litter and litter, so it's like my <laughs> shit don't stop ringing. It's like I, I yeah. can't hold this phone and, and and be disturbed all the time. Like so, right. but sometimes like a lot of shit. I, when I record my shit lately, like even my my album that I got, um, Food One and Food Two and Black Tape, like. And more shit. steroids. Like my last made me five projects. It's like I just hear the beat and go in, like load, lo- load that up. You know what I mean? And and I just start going. Like it just mm. that should just take me there. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, the thing about let's talk about that. The Griselda sound. Yes. Obviously, a lot was that was built with Derringer. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Derringer. Mix. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shout out to you, Diesel, you, man. You, mm-hmm. You grab everybody, mugs, they, but it still keeps the same type of vibe to the sound. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. do you describe the Griselda sound and why is it so important? I mean, <laughs> fly guy. how proud are you of the fly guy? I'm, I'm very proud. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we we got the formula. It's it's, mm. it's just a formula. Yeah. And um. So you reject a lot of beats. Starting, yeah, yeah, me, yeah. <laughs> no, hundred percent. Listen to niggas. Beats, I, like bro. right, like, right now, on. seriously, it's like we have a sound. So Derringer is always the nucleus first. Mm. Yes. You know, always. You know what I mean? Once we do what we do with him, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, let's see what Al got. Yeah. You know what? Uh, let me see what Pete got. Let me see what he Static got, got mm-hmm. in the chamber. Let me see what Muggs, the people that can add on to what Derringer got. But it's, it's Derringer first. Set in the term. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Derringer always first. You know what I'm saying? Once his parts is done, then I, you know, I reach out, get a few other ones. And then the hardest shit be, the hardest Derringer mm-hmm. choice on the album be the ones after he hear they shit. You be like, hold on, I got fire, two more. Yeah. And then you be like, that's how you get, you know what I mean? Like them shits because it's like, Derringer is a competitor too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing too. Like, even when I go to Alchemist's house, he be like, yo, I got to step my shit up. Derringer killing me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or I, like, it's like, it's it's like Griselda is just, it's just different, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got the best of the best that all come together to make this shit to be what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're always going to get the best from Derringer. We're going to get the best from Al. But I what are you got looking for? Like, what's, that, Pete, Benny, what's that sound? Like, what's that sound to you guys? Like, as, as rappers, like, when you hear them beats, like, what is what do you, what does it convey to you? Like, what is that I'm sound? Looking, I'm looking for golden era, hard shit. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. and Derringer, it's, it's hard to describe because, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of Derringer copycats. Mm. You know what I'm saying? There's yeah. a lot of Griselda copycats right now. Yeah. I'm just looking for that, just that that gutter, raw shit. You know what I'm saying? That 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 rich Griselda sound. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to describe it. It's hard know. shit. You know what I mean? Know. Just when I, I when I hear a Derringer beat, just that's it. And the dope thing about him is he know what to make the cater to him. He know what to make the cater to him. And he know what to make the cater to me. Mm. What, right, what's that difference? Break that down if you, if you can. Uh, you know, he like his shits, like slow. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, everybody like... He he be on some, the slow shit. Me, I be on like my tempo's a little faster. And him, this is my opinion. You know what I'm saying, yeah, I'm course, speaking yeah. for these niggas right now. Him, his shit is just dark, spooky. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel it's like it's built around that. You know what I mean? Yeah. For the uh, for the most part. But shit, you can't forget about my man Apollo Brown because I meant to act, talk about this last time you were here, Westside. Mm-hmm. My favorite Westside gun track is Mr. T. Mm-hmm. How did that joint come about? I play that joint almost every day. Um. Well, a while ago, they had Apollo Brown had hit me to do an album. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He wanted to do a whole album together, and um, it just never worked out. But I had agreed to do an album. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he had sent me like 25 beats. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So it was just like um, I just had him in the stash. The business didn't work out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, but I like I said, I was down. You know what I mean? But Business didn't work out. I still heard I had the beats though. Mm-hmm. I did a joint for his album, so I'm like, well, I did a joint for your album. I need one for mine then, at least. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That way we we just good. You know what I mean? Fuck all the other shit. You still the homie. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We gonna do more shit, but I got a project about to drop. I want you on my shit since I'm on your shit, mm-hmm. and that's how you got it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It was just like. 
it was a lot of beats on there that was nuts too, but it was just that one was just talking to me the most. And I just I, I made that shit in like 20, 30 minutes. Wow. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. Majestic. Yeah. And it just came out that way. And then I, I sent it to him. He was overseas. As soon as I as soon as I made it, I sent it to him. I ain't getting no response for a while. And then I just dropped it. I'm just like, well, shit, this nigga ain't gonna hit me back, man. I'm dropping this shit anyway. Right. He gonna he gonna like the response <laughs> of, uh, from the people, right. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what happened, you know what I'm saying? Like he finally hear, heard it and was just like, yo, this shit nuts, and it's it's a classic. That's one of yeah. my favorite joints. Did Ronnie Fogg ever send you that size nine of kids? Hell no, nah. <laughs> hell no, nah, man. Listen, fag, I need all of them shits. <laughs> Stop playing with me. Word up. Looking good. Look I'm at that jacket, though. I'm saying, he got the jacket. It's okay. <laughs> I wear D squared now because of uh, what, the Fly God. <laughs> Yo, man. It's, the Fly God put you on? He put me on. You know, my, my music is like the Fly Nigga Bible. You know what I'm saying? If you fly and you up, because, you know, a lot of shit I be speaking on. See, people, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people just hear the rhyming. Mm -hmm. But if you really listen to what I'm talking about, and it, I, I give detail and everything. Mm -hmm. Like, when you yeah. really. You know, peep what I'm talking about. You be like, oh, okay, okay, okay. They just, a lot of people just, you know what I mean? They, they catch the fly guy mm -hmm. imagery and the style and how I spit and, you know, just the style of it. But right. if you actually listen to what I'm saying, though, like in detail, it's, it's some of the flyest shit ever made. Seriously. Yeah. Yo, well, it's been a beautiful year for Gazelda, as Conway said, man. Yeah, it's been real beautiful. Mm -hmm. These six real. joints, man. If they don't know. Sabrina Blindtel, Hitler Six, Friend of Oz, Tanner hey. Talk Free, Black Tape, Everybody's Food, Everybody's Food Two. Hey, really seven now. Yeah, right. you know, I want to double listen. that in nineteen. Oh, my you doing fourteen next year? I could believe mm. it. Maybe twelve. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'm ready. We, we could do that. That's the thing about it. Like, yo, this shit is, is, is no effort. It's yeah, no you said that effortless. Like, Conway, kind of, you yeah. break that down a lot. Like how effortless it is. Do you feel like it's Still effortless for you, like as an artist, and like, do you think artists have to have that element where there's a certain component where it does feel effortless? Or I think so. Like... I think for me, like my favorite, my favorite guys in this shit is the ones like I could tell when somebody put a lot of thought in their shit, like mm. it took them, I don't know, however long it took them to write that shit, and then yeah. you could just hear like, like for example, that whole was free verse. Yeah, that didn't take. A month to write, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You hear how effortless right. he hope. spitted yeah, that shit. Yeah, that's yeah, like, yeah. that's why he's it comes from that who place. he is. Yeah, like, it comes you know from that place. When you speak reality, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah. Speak reality is easy. Yeah, you know you when you're trying to find something to say, mm. that's when it's an issue. That's why like, I think make a, a, the the illest MCs. You are LMC if you could do some some hard shit easily. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Effortlessly. Yeah. That's why we love like Steph Curry. You can easily shoot from thirty or beyond. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's what we on. That's why I love the effortlessness of niggas like Nas, niggas like O, and so on and so forth. Man, yeah. it's just like you know the Raekwons and all that. Like, how did y'all think of that and do that? Yeah, <laughs> you know that's what I'm saying? Are, and yeah. I just I just want to be that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, keep going, man. Give Zelda, man. Congrats, Zelda, man. man. Conway. Well, man. 18, 2019. Congrats. Congrats. Nice three. shirt, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> nice Compliments shirt. Compliments to the company. Gun. Nice Griselda. Shirt, it's a Griselda man. Christmas to Griselda New Year, baby. Absolutely. Absolutely. Merry motherfucking Christmas to <laughs> <laughs> And I'll take this bottle with me. <laughs> yeah, wrap it up podcast. We out of here. Yo.